Today I'm going to talk about the Twin Flame Unified Energy, also known as the 1111. Twin flames will begin to see. They're usually the forerunners and the first to see this. I wanted to be with you, but that's all in the past now. It's all a part of the awakening, awakening, awakening process. I hope I never see you again, never see you again, never see you again. <laughs> Welcome back to River Queen Conjure, No Narc Network TV, and Oshun Ajay exclusive. I am the Oracle, Oshun Ajay. This is Twin Flame Trials and Triumphs, Volume 4, where we'll learn a little bit more about the healing that takes place individually once Twin Flames have been separated for about a year. Check it out. And if you look at the top of the diagram, you'll see the yin yang symbol. So the yin is the darker feminine energy. Feminine energy is always calm and soft, cold. I've learned a lot from the video, I learned a lot this past year. It rules the subconscious mind, the nighttime. It's receptive, it's intuitive and it has an inner knowing. Through my social following, my career, my life did it like a 180. And the yang energy is bright. It's reflective of the sun. I'm in a good place. Passionate, vibrant, hot. It's taking care of myself, you know. It's strong. It's about growth. It's about what you can build. It's about aesthetics and what is pleasing to the eye. Drinking more water, exfoliating. It can sometimes be aggressive as well. I like to learn my lessons the hard way, the hard way, the hard way. These pieces come together and are a reflective mirror of one another. I'm glad that we did the video. It's definitely changed both of our lives for the better. The universe consists of dual energies, the feminine and the masculine, the light and the dark, the sun and the moon. This energy can trickle down. When it trickles down, let's say, to the fifth dimension, it now becomes two split energies. I think they took away that I was a damsel in distress and he was a villain. So in the higher realms, it's one energy. And as the energy trickles down, it splits. And it wasn't that cut and dry. We both are human and we both make mistakes. If your third eye is open, you can actually experience this. And on a soul level, you know that there is a connection there. This is unlike any other connection that you have ever had. People feel like they know the whole story of our relationship from watching a five minute video, which is just absurd. and. You know, it kind of makes me seem like a bad person, which I'm not. You're not a bad person. You're not a bad person. This is one of the reasons why it's been very difficult for many to understand the obsessive thinking and the obsessive thoughts about this particular individual. You are telepathically communicating all the time. There is a soul connection a soul signature that has been recognized on the 3D physical plane. Courtney was like one of the only people I could relate to. You both received a heart activation when you met one another. So because you are multidimensional, you can now exist on the physical plane and you can exist in the spiritual plane. Your soul recognizes this but your ego and your mind cannot always remember the essence of who you really are there hasn't really been a video like this before yeah you're like infamous now i used to read the comments and see all the fucked up shit people would say wish death on me being judged by people that don't know me is really i don't take it personally i'm a black man living in america so I've kind of been judged on things outside of my character my whole life. 
I don't know, I kind of think that the cycle, cycle, cycle with me and Courtney might have continued. And part of the reason I did the video was so that, you know, Courtney would be able to move on. So that I could move on. Yes, because you still wanted to be with me after I didn't want to be with you. Did and I? I don't know what are why you, you sit about? up here in front. When you approached me to do the video, I was you did your, I was you exclusive. did your, I was you exclusive. did your thing. I, I did, did my not thing. do my thing. A narcissist will not hesitate to tell a lie just to justify the unethical ways in which they treat you. It's also an attempt to relieve the guilt from what they know that they are doing, which is wrong. We did this to get exposure as entertainers. That's not true, not true, not true. It was obviously a setup for me because I was the one who would be painted as a cheater. I asked you to do it so we could talk about things because we never talked about things. We never talked about things. We never talked about things. Everyone who's ever been in a relationship with a narcissist could make that exact same statement. We never talked about things. What is there to talk about? What is there to talk about? What is there to talk about? And every narcissist who's ever been deceiving someone in a relationship has made this same statement every time that their partner was ready to have a conversation about anything. For one, they did not want to connect emotionally. And secondly, they did not want to provide an opportunity for the truth to come out. What is there to talk about? Us being together. We were never together. This what? is what happened. I just, I order food, chill for the night. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Come get some truth. You're tripping. Hmm? You're tripping. Sit down. Don't tell me what to do. You're tripping. What are you doing? Like, what are you, what is this? You, you throw things out there like that without adding context to make me look like a bad person. You That's look all like a crybaby right now. Says You're her crying be says her because babe. you said cruel things to me. You cheated on me. You put me through hell, Leonard. I want to talk to you. Said cruel things to me. You cheated on me. You put me through hell, Leonard. I want to talk to you real quick. It's over with. You're not on my team. When I should have said to hell with him, I said he's not a bad person. Because you know that times. I'm not. Saying he's not a bad person is not saying, oh, he told me that. He didn't want to be in a you relationship. You never said that. A lot of distorted masculines will ghost their partner and then tell themselves and the rest of the world a whole nother story about how it went down. And at some point, it seems that they actually begin to believe the lies that they're telling because they will actually try to tell them back to you as if you weren't there. Never. You didn't say that. So why didn't you say this last time? Because Why didn't you tell me last time when we were here, you were never my girlfriend, I never cheated on you, and now you're saying all of this, like, what are you talking about? Because we came here to get on. That's not the, that's not the case. That was never the case. It was always the case. Maybe that was the case for you, but I had feelings for you, and I wanted to know what was going on. You don't want to face the truth. After denying you the truth by avoiding every single conversation that you ever tried to have about the issues and by never giving you a straight answer to your questions, they are literally denying you the truth, but then have the audacity to tell you that you can't handle or you're not ready for the truth. This is just them projecting their fear of their own truth onto truth. you. What truth? What's your truth, Leonard? Go ahead. What's your truth? You put me in fucked up situations, and then you play the victim. Every time. The whole time we messed around, I told you, hey, Courtney, like, I really like you, I love you, but I don't want to be in a relationship with you. That's never what I wanted. This is the face, my people of the narcissist demon. This is gaslighting at its finest. And I'm sure she, uh, even though she's used to this despicable behavior, I'm sure even a whole year later, she is in absolute uh, disbelief at how boldly the devil can look you in your face and lie and how easily the narc demon can switch masks.
We met in school, we met in college, um, we met in class, and you really didn't like me. No, I didn't like you at first. A couple years later, we moved into like the same apartment complex, and the first day we both moved there, we like met on the elevator again, it was like a reunion. And then you offered to bring my groceries upstairs. And um, yeah, we spent a lot of time together. Like every day. I would say that you were my best friend. Yeah, me too. Spending every day together and, you know, becoming best friends and having sex um, kind of equ equates to a relationship. But what a narcissist will do is they will avoid putting a label on what it is that you guys have so that when they get ready to ghost you or cheat on you, they can always go back and say, well, we never really um, officially said that we were this or that but you did absolutely everything that you would have been doing had you just said the words that you were officially in a relationship, okay? Even when they are married, they still are not committed. Um, but a lot of the, the tactics that they use in order to block out emotional connections, such as avoiding conversations, is to avoid commitment. This is what a narcissist is not going to give you whether they quote unquote married you or not. They are never committed. They are only committed to themselves. And you know we're going to look at and explore the science behind this. I know a lot of you, most of you, if you dealt with a narcissist, I can almost guarantee you that all of them have cheated or betrayed you in some sort of way in regards to that area. The narcissist cannot resist the temptation of attention, admiration, and adulation from other people, okay? They cannot resist that. So that means everyone or anything that strikes their interest in that way will steer them off into that direction. No matter if you are doing everything you need to do for them or not, that relationship has a shelf life that is going to expire. I've moved on. Most of these relationships with them come to very shocking, brutal, bitter ends. Okay, because of the behavior and the things that these individuals display and the things that they do. I'm happy you finally found someone that can give you what you deserve, sis. Because relationships go through ups and downs. Relations, everything is not perfect in a relationship, but the narcissist wants whatever they acquire or whatever they have to be somewhat perfect. I'm happy for you. The narcissist, while they are with you, at some point decides they have to acquire secondary reinforcements. Okay? These secondary reinforcements are put in place strategically to transition once they begin to lose interest in you. You're going to fizzle out. I don't care who you are. You're going to fizzle out in their interest. So when this happens and when the narcissist starts to feel the ineffectiveness of you being that particular type of drug to stimulate them emotionally, inside they go looking for secondary reinforcements okay other people other things to bring that same satisfaction that the newness creates of just meeting someone so this secondary reinforcement they begin maybe they're going to the grocery store or a coffee shop or something like that wherever or wherever they're working they have an eye on an individual they will begin to aggressively pursue this individual trying to get their attention trying to be noticed by them uh, doing acts of kindness j different gestures of kindness to lure them in okay I actually uh, was in a relationship when we shot the first one you didn't say that last time. I don't have to, it's not your business. I don't have to tell you everything. 
Now, once they're doing this, it doesn't. This doesn't happen overnight, guys. This doesn't happen overnight. So when most of you find out that your partner, your narcissist, has cheated on you, or the narcissist has cheated on you, this was a process that had already been in the making for quite some time. This is when you finally accept the truth of who they are, and let them go. I was in love with you. Typically, from what I've known, they usually have about two or three lined up that they're grooming, courting, or seducing, as I say, to be the replacement for you. I wanted to be with you, but that's all in the past now. The embodiment of the yin or the divine feminine means that one is highly spiritual, intuitive, and divinely guided, has a deeper knowing and an understanding of the essence of who you are. Narcissists have to have this contrast of good and bad. They can't have too good at the same time. This confuses their whole logical process and way of thinking. Okay? So they have to be able to make one of you negative and one of you positive. So what happens is the person, the primary source that they've been with, they have to begin to see them as negative and ineffective. It said cruel things to me. You cheated on me. You put me through hell. Leonard. Validate the reason for them to have to go out and get another source because you're ineffective. It said cruel things to me. You cheated on me. You put me through hell, Leonard. The divine masculine, a bit more aggressive, based out of the ego, one who is perhaps self-serving, one who is guided by beauty or intrigued by aesthetics. I hope I never see you again. I wipe my hands of you. It's as if they are a mirror of one another. When you descended down to the physical plane, this was in agreement that you would come down in energies, you would split. So the two energies are split in the matrix and you go about your physical existence in the 3D plane but at some point you meet, there's a heart activation. Um, it was the hardest spiritual work that I have ever um, had to do in my life. Once that heart chakra opens, there is no going back, no going back, no going back. It was because of me not listening to my intuition, but at the same time, I feel like I would not have known to listen so strongly because I've always been one who does listen to my intuition, but it was time for it to become deeper and deeper and deeper. For the Divine Feminine, many of your spiritual gifts have woken up. It was time for my, me to merge more with my higher self even more. Now you are stepping into your purpose, what you are here uh, to do you are meant to do something. If you are a forerunner, you are from the twin flame connection, chances are you are already on your path. It was time for, you know, my intuition to become my, my main source of light, okay, in this world. And so what happened, everything that happened, it had to happen, okay? And, and I, it had to happen not just to me, but to everyone who feels like that they are having this awakening and are on this quote unquote twin flame journey. Whatever part of your spiritual awakening that has jarred you. Um, awake, okay, in this matrix, matrix, okay, and has led you even here to hear these words. The divine masculine clearing out their karma at this time. They have karmic debt. You are not the only player in their life. They have other karmic players as well. They need to clear out that karmic debt. Okay. It, 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 it's because it, it was supposed to happen, okay? So all is as it should be. You have a soul blueprint with that person. It created an activation in you. Once 
this unified energy merges into the 5D, it becomes a collective energy. You merge as light. That we talk about that twin flame, but you remembering yourself as the, the entire flame and merging with it, you know, and feeling like totally embodying your soul and your spirit. This is what you realize that you are. You merge as light. It's totally about self-acceptance as being love. So all these divine light beings are now, are now merging together. It's coming together. No matter how much you love and feel drawn to that other person, because you have, they have a part of you in them. So when you descended, you split in energies down to the 3D to play out the role. The third dimension is kind of like a game. You must balance both energies within the self, okay? That is the message. You came for the purpose of ascension and to help humanity. It's healing for the world, okay? So Stepping into higher levels of consciousness. Well, it's very important that you, you plug into the source. The whole confusion about this person came because... Your mind doesn't remember. No one can understand the intensity of these energies and this energetic separation and reunification unless you have experienced it, okay? You don't recognize that this is a spiritual connection. The, the pain and the separation happens in physicality so that you are forced to acknowledge that the union is a spiritual, is a spiritual, is a spiritual one. Okay. A true twin flame relationship is one of two people who have accepted that the balance of, of electricity and magnetism that they have within themselves makes them a whole flame within themselves. And now I want a twin. I want something just like me, something that has balanced both of those energies within themselves, within themselves, within themselves. Within themselves.